What's up my loves, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new here, welcome to my channel. My name is Lizelle and today's video is actually going to be a first impression, if I can find it on my desk. I'm doing a first impressions on the Silly Sponge. So this is actually one of those things that became a trend not too long ago. I'm a little bit late on the bandwagon, but I finally got my hands on one. This one in particular is from the brand Violet Voss. And isn't it so cute? I do know that Molly Cosmetics was in fact one of, if not the first company to come out with a silly sponge. And when I first saw this, I thought like, I don't know, it's just a weird concept. And then people started getting out their, what are they called? Their chicken fillet sticky bras and applying their makeup all with that. And I was like, this is just getting too crazy for me. But in the end, I figured that it was one of those things that I couldn't knock until I tried it for myself. So CJ actually picked this up for me. He recently got me the Violet Boss Ride or Die palette and he threw one of these into the cart as well. So the packaging, it comes in this little holographic box. I've been loving Violet Boss's packaging lately. It's all so cute. And this is it right here. It's pretty much, yeah, just like a silicon rounded teardrop teardropped shape looking thing and it has the Violet Boss logo all over it with these little pretty bows. So if I just read what it says on the back of the box it says pro tip foundation application has never been easier dab and pat foundation on the face in small motions be sure to use less product than normal for best results. So the fact that you can apparently use less product with this thing is a plus for me. I totally love my beauty blender. I use that all the time. So we'll have to see how this compares. I've already primed and moisturized my face. So what I'm going to do today, I'm going to use the Milani Conceal and Perfect Foundation. And I'm just going to, I guess, take a little bit, not a whole pump because I want to use less product apparently. So I'm just going to take a little tiny dot. This feels so weird, like I don't really know what I'm doing. Okay, so I guess I'll just smooth it, smear it onto my face. This is really weird to hold, first up. Oh my gosh, I probably put too much, but that was like the smallest amount. What the heck? Like, okay girl, way too much product. It feels really smooth. Oh my gosh, how am I gonna shear this out? I put too much. Let me just wipe the excess onto this side. It's kind of hard to get like around the nose, like to get it even, cause I can see streaks happening. So that's one side. I don't know, it feels really unusual. Like it doesn't feel right. Like it looks okay. Let me, let me look close up actually. All right, let's have a look at this close up. Um, yeah, I don't know how I feel about that. Cause you can totally see the streaks from like where I've been smearing it around my face. And it's definitely hard to get it to look nice, like, around your nose. Like, I feel like, oh, maybe if I dab it, it sounds really weird. <laughs> like, can you guys hear this? That kind of helps. I don't know if you guys can see along the edge where there's a seam. That kind of does imprint onto your face, if that makes sense. So I'm probably going to need to hold it, like this for it to not do that but that's really uncomfortable honestly like it doesn't look bad to me it doesn't look that bad but I just got to get rid of this stuff around my eye because it definitely doesn't work well around the eyes I will be doing my concealer with this after I do my face so we'll see how that goes but let me just finish off the rest of my face so I'm not going to take half a pump I'll just take the tiniest dot like literally that's nothing that is actually nothing. And again, I'll just... Oh, okay. It all went onto my cheek. I guess I'll just smear this around again. It's weird because when you see it go onto your pores, it kind of doesn't go... Like the makeup doesn't go into your pores straight away like a beauty blend would. So it really shows your pores, but then you kind of smooth it in and it doesn't look so bad, if that makes sense. I have to say, it definitely does like make my foundation look like it's more full coverage. This foundation is already very full coverage, but it makes it look flawless. Like 
I don't know, it's, it's definitely a different finish to the Beauty Blender. For my forehead, I don't really like putting too much foundation up here. Just, that's personal preference. Like, I just put whatever is left on my Beauty Blender up here whenever I do my forehead. But <laughs> there's nothing left on this, so... Yeah, let's just kind of dab around the face, do the dabbing thing again. That sound though. When I'm dabbing like around my nose, I have to make sure that the seam of it isn't like hitting any part of my face because it leaves like marks on my face, if that makes sense. And it's really hard to make it look nice on the nose. Like with the Beauty Blender, it kind of squishes to mold to the shape of your nose and fill in every area. Whereas this is a little harder to work with. Okay, so that's my face done. Honestly, I don't think it looks too bad. Like I was expecting it to be super streaky and just like useless, but it's actually not that bad. And to clean it, I'm just wiping it with a baby wipe because I'm going to move on and do my concealer now and we'll see how it goes around the eyes. Like this is the part that will help me determine whether I will use it a lot because around the eyes, I don't know if it's going to work. First of all, let me just put a little bit of peachy color corrector under there because I always do that. Let's see if this helps with blending all that. I guess I can use the other side. I've been using the underside where there's no like print. Um, I consider this to be the front side so we'll use this for that because there's no seam there if that makes sense. So we'll see how it goes. Not bad. Although it doesn't have very like a very pointed tip, so it's hard to get like into this inner corner. It's so weird that I'm applying like my makeup with a piece of silicone. Like who would have thought, right? Okay, now that the corrector is done, <laughs> I'm gonna do my concealer. So I'm going to use the LA Girl Pro Conceal HD Concealer. <gasps> oh, I just realized that I probably should have put less, right? Yeah, okay, let's try and pick up that excess and put it everywhere else. Here I am like packing on my concealer because that's usually what I do. But I don't need to. Oops. Let's see how this goes. This is going to be full coverage because I put like way too much. Oh my gosh. I feel like this is going to be a disaster. I shouldn't have put too much. Oh my bad. Okay, so that wasn't too bad, but under the eyes... Yeah, okay. I kind of do prefer the fact that the Beauty Blender does help to take away excess product. And if I was to keep using this, I feel like I'd have to get used to the fact that I don't need to use as much product, which is a good thing, I suppose, because you're saving money because you're not having to use so much product and then having to repurchase it like sooner than you would normally. But it just doesn't really work very well with this seam. I don't know if it's just the design of this. Like, I feel like if... The design of this sponge didn't have a seam, then it would work a lot better. Because I don't know if you guys can see, but around the edge there's like a little join that's got that it's got going on. So perhaps I should. Tr I think there are other ones that you can try that don't have that. It's just like a pure piece of silicon, silicon with no joins. But this one, yeah, that join is really stuffing up my game. Yeah, okay, I have my beauty blinder here. This is gonna help me because I just can't get it to sit right. And I put way too much product, so that might be a contributing factor. <sighs> okay, that's better. So let me just go ahead and uh, powder and all that. And I'll be back to let you guys know what I actually think of it. So I'm back you guys. As you can see, I am done with the rest of my face. I had no issues when it came to applying the rest of my makeup on top of my foundation. It's still looking pretty full coverage, which is awesome. Like I totally was not expecting it to give me that full coverage that it said it would because I did use like a little less foundation and concealer than I normally would. Actually the concealer I probably still went a little over the top with, but foundation I definitely used a lot less than I normally would. So I totally agree with the claims when it says that it will give you full coverage with less foundation, which is awesome because then it means that you are using less product and thus saving a little more money. I totally do recommend this, although I don't think it's like a necessity. I feel like a beauty blender is something that everybody should have because it's so like 
it does a number of things like you can blend out your foundation your concealer and you can also apply powder and pack it on and bake and all that kind of stuff I did not try baking with this I have heard that you can but just personally I don't know I just didn't want to try it I didn't think it would work the awesome thing about this as well is that it's really easy to clean basically just wipe the clean with a baby wipe once you're done applying your makeup and it's good to go which is a lot less hassle than having to go and use soap and all that to clean out a beauty blender I think I will continue to use this probably only for my base though like for my foundation I don't think I'm gonna use it for my concealer because I did have a bit of difficulty when it came to getting like right in this inner corner so I feel like it's good for large areas of the face like packing on the foundation especially to my cheeks because I do have a little bit of acne scarring going on so I feel like it's good for that but when it comes to going around the crevices of your face particularly the nose and definitely in the inner corner of the eyes it's very hard to give it like that smooth flawless finish that a beauty blender gives so yeah that's pretty much it for my quick little review on the Violet Voss Silly Sponge such a funny name Silly Sponge if you guys have any questions about it don't hesitate to leave me a comment down below I'll be sure to get back to you guys ASAP and if you did enjoy this video please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you aren't already subscribed so you don't miss a video I post with that being said I hope you guys are having an awesome week and I will catch you all in my next video Stay glowy.